Hello, beautiful light skinned ladies. Uh, today, I want to talk about the Ice Spice and Cleotrapa stuff that's been going on. I have so much to say, and this whole situation has been pretty triggering to me. Uh, I went to Ice Spice's Instagram, and all I see are Black women in droves leaving comments saying, just know we hate you, like hateful comments like that. And I'm starting to realize that our community or this community, if you don't count yourself as a part of it, if you separated yourself, this particular community, and I'm talking about in the Western world, like in America and in the UK, because a lot of those women are from, a lot of those women in the comments, they are from America and the UK. They do not like at all. They do not like light-skinned Black women. And they definitely don't like light-skinned Black women who are from uh, a different country, who have a different national origin, specifically Caribbean women like myself, Haitian women, Jamaican women, and I'm talking about light-skinned women from these countries, or like Ice Spice, she is Dominican. And we're going to get into that. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I've researched where this all came from. Like, why is she hated so much, specifically by Black American women or ADOS women or, you know, women who just purely identify as, you know, Black or, or African? Because there's even some African women. Like, remember, like, the, these channels online, these colorism channels online, they are run by women who are not um, ADOS. Like, they're not your Black American that's been here for generations and generations. They are the first generation Black Americans or Black uh, UKs that, you know, their parents come from Africa. So I'm not, I don't want to, the reason I'm clarifying this is because I don't want there to be any confusion about who's, who's doing what. Are there Black Americans in the community that share the same sentiments? Yes. I think we're going to note who exactly is leading th these kinds of thoughts on, um, on social media and here in the YouTube space, like Impressive, Queen Chaoma, uh, who is it? Uh, what's her face? Uh, I am Eloho, all those people. And I'm calling these specific people out because they are the ones who have openly said negative things about light-skinned Black women. And they're going to be like, oh, I wasn't trying to be hateful towards light-skinned women. I don't care because you sit up here and you talk about light-skinned, you talk negatively about light-skinned Black women all the time, all the time. And Ice Spice is one of those, is one of those women. Ice Spice, she's, she's Dominican. So let me not get there. Let me not go there just yet. But based on my research, what I found is that this is the interview that Ice Spice did that caused a bunch of Black women to feel like they needed to hate her and accuse her of being colorism, uh, colorist, accuse her of being colorist. This interview, she was not supposed to be asked about colorism. And if you were to ask someone about colorism, why would you ask someone who's Dominican? Because as you know, the Dominican history, the Dominican and Haitian history is very complex and race is not seen exactly the same as it is here in America. Skin tone isn't seen exactly the same as it is here in America. So like, why would you ask someone to speak on American colorism when they're not even a part of that? Like they're not, that's not where they come from. That's not the worldview that they grew up with. And I'm not saying that colorism doesn't exist. I'm just saying people don't live exactly the same way. So what does I Spice say? She says, no, I don't think that my success is coming from colorism. How would you feel? How would you feel if you got a job position at a company that you had been wanting to, wanting to work for since you were five years old? Basically, it's your dream, dream job, dream career, or your dream vocation. Maybe it's not a career, maybe it's a vocation. But someone asks you, do you feel like you are a diversity hire? Do you feel like your blackness helps you have an advantage? How would you feel if someone asked you that and tried to say that, tried to imply that your success wasn't from any effort of your own? And how would you respond? Would you literally just be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm a diversity hire. The only reason that they hired me is because I'm black. Or the only reason that they hired me is because I'm dark skinned and you know they need to have more dark skinned people on the team. How would that I made a video before talking about how light-skinned Black women don't experience colorism. And I just want to remind you guys what that is. Hey guys, I'm sorry if I sound a little down. I'm just very upset um, with what's going on with Ice Spice. How many people have actually read this book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens? I wonder how many people who actually, how many people who get on here and talk about colorism have actually read this book or even heard of this book. I'll be the first to say that I have not yet read this book, but I'm educated enough to know that in this book, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens, Alice Walker, she defined colorism. So anyone who wants to know where the 
term colorism came from? It came from Alice Walker, a Black woman in 1982. Before then, that word did not exist. That word did not exist. I'm telling you, this is purely an American concept. It, it's, a, it's a Black American concept. This is part of Black American history. That's one of the things that frustrates me so much about this. But the definition is prejudicial or preferential treatment of same race people based solely on the color of their skin. So all of you people that are talking about, oh, light-skinned people don't experience colorism, you are basically slapping Alice Walker in the face. You're basically saying that she wrote her book for nothing. Look at Alice Walker's skin tone in this photo. Some people, they're gonna say that she's brown skinned, which I really don't care because to me, all that means is that you don't feel threatened by that skin tone until later on down the line, they do something that you don't agree with. And then you're like, oh, you're light skinned and you're arrogant. Yeah, but just look at her skin tone. And when I look at her, it makes sense why she wrote this definition the way that she did, because she understands the nuances in Black subcultures that not everybody perceives skin tone the exact same way across America, across Black America. So for people to now in 2024 be on here talking about light skin people don't experience colorism, it's just appalling to me. But the reason I brought this definition up is because you can see this in the ice spice situation. I want to pull up one other definition before we get into the ice spice clear trappa situation, okay? Just bear with me. One other definition. And I'm going to pull up color discrimination. As defined by... Let's do the DOE. Oh, EOC, EOC came up first. Okay, we're going to read both of these definitions, okay? Let's see. Okay, race and color discrimination. Okay, let's see if they say anything about a specific skin tone. Race discrimination involves treating someone unfavorably because he or she is of a certain race or because of personal characteristics associated with race. So that's the definition for race discrimination. Now, the second sentence is the, the legal definition that stands today of color discrimination. Color discrimination involves treating someone unfavorably because of skin color complexion. Discrimination can occur when the victim and the person who inflicted the discrimination are the same race or color. So you can be a light-skinned person discriminating against another person with light skin, and that would still be color discrimination. Why is this, why do people not understand this? Why is this so hard to understand? Why do you have first generation black Americans on these colorism channels spreading lies? This is, if someone, if someone is telling you that a certain person of a certain complexion can't experience color discrimination, they're a liar. They're lying. They're trying to take away your rights. But yeah, let's go back to, Prejudicial or preferential treatment of same race people based solely on the color of their skin. And I would argue that Ice Spice right now is experiencing prejudicial treatment. She's being treated harshly by same race people because of her skin tone. Let's go to her profile.
it's not going to let me, I don't know if it's going to let me use the comments, with, look at the comments, with, but you can go on Instagram and you'll see what I'm talking about. And this is why I absolutely love that she doesn't um, delete her comments because now all of the black women under her comments are exposing themselves. They're exposing themselves. They're absolutely exposing themselves. But this is very intersectional, what she's experiencing, because if you look at those comments, a lot of the objections and a lot of the hate is coming after her, her national origin. The fact that she is a Dominican and they're trying to say that she's not black. And that's why it's, uh, it's, it's, it's intersectional. And because she's a woman, because people don't do this the same as they're not as vehement with their um, bashing of light-skinned men, light-skinned Black men, regardless of where they come from. I mean, just think of Sean Paul. This is Sean Paul. How much Black music has he been in? Does he ever get criticized? for being a part of reggae, being a part of so much Black music, being a part of dance hall. Hmm? Look at this. Does anybody try to discredit his Blackness openly? I'm not asking what people uh, genuinely think. Because it's fine if you if you look and you're like, oh, you know, Sean Paul, Sean Paul, he's not he's not black, but whatever, he's a great musician or whatever, or whatever, he's doing his thing. You don't even have to like his music, but do you see people openly dragging him all up in his business, trying to figure out what he's doing with people he invites to his tours, trying to see if he's gonna coddle other black people? No. Let me stop sharing my screen. But now moving on to the Cleotrapa accusations that she made in her video, the first thing, and I'm not gonna address every single thing because we would be here forever and I have so much to say anyways. So thank you for listening. If you've gotten this far, thank you. If you need to take a break, I absolutely understand. But some of the things that stood out to me in Cleotrapa's um you know, rant online was that she expected some form of loyalty from Ice Spice, some, some sort of friendship. It's funny that she assumes that she's friends with Ice Spice, but then claims to have never spent a total of 10 hours. She hasn't even spent a total of 10 hours around Ice Spice, despite having known her for two years. That just doesn't make sense to me because I found a live stream with her and Ice Spice and Kai Sinat. And that was at least, I think it was a, at least one hour and they've been on there multiple times. So you mean to tell me you haven't spent at least 10 hours around Ice Spice? But how long does it take to actually call someone your friend? How long does it take Clear Trap for her to re feel like she's making a friend? Well, if you listen to her rant, not long because she made friends with the hairstylist that she had to basically sleep with. She had to sleep in the hairstylist's room because she couldn't afford to get her own hotel room, but decided to go on a 30-day tour out of state without being able to hold her own. And Ice Spice is colorist because of that? Ice Spice's colors because she couldn't pay for every little thing. And she claims that Ice Spice told her that, hey, you know, I'll cover all your expenses. You don't have to pay for anything. I find it interesting that Ice Spice was prompted to say that because Cleotrapa asked, she asked, okay, what do I, what am I going to have to pay for? But she didn't ask any further questions. She didn't ask you know, are you, have you already booked the first hotel since, since you're just one day away from the start of the tour? How, how come you didn't ask her, Hey, did you already book the room? Okay. Am I going to be, am I going to be, which nights am I going to be staying with you? Like, why not sort all of that out? But I, that's fine. If you just didn't have the mental clarity at the time, I can understand that. 
But if you know that you don't even have the money to get yourself back home, because that's why you stayed on the tour bus from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., you don't have the money to get yourself back home. You don't have the money to get yourself a room. You don't have money to tip the security guy. What are you doing traveling for 30 days where you don't have any money and you don't have anyone who has your that, you know, that can bail you out if you need it? Like, what are you doing? And about this bag incident, she's upset because the security guard that is hired and paid to protect Ice Spice, protect her belongings, he doesn't grab the Atrapa's bag at the, at the car or whatever. He doesn't grab her bags. And Cleotrapa made a huge deal out of it. At no point in her rant, did she ever mention tipping the man, tipping the man out of her own initiative? I don't know about you, but whenever I will travel and I go to a hotel and I valet or I go to somewhere nice that has like a hotel, because, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, resorts or a lot of attraction type places that have hotels. Whenever I do that, I tip. And I have no problems tipping. And at that socioeconomic bracket, that's so much higher than my socioeconomic bracket. Why would you not want to tip? And then she gets rude. You know, you're getting in the car and you're trying to show how frustrated you are without just calming yourself down and calmly inquiring about, hey, do you know what I need to do to get some help with these bags? Did you not, were you not able to reach out to someone at the hotel that you guys were staying at? Because hotels have hoppers. I don't know. I, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, you don't have to be a celebrity to get your bags carried. But at the same time, like you don't have to expect another celebrity security guard to treat you like they're like, like you're the celebrity that they're hired to work for. You're not. You're not the celebrity that was hired, that the security guard was hired to work for. And if you're getting out at a hotel, just go in and you really don't want to get the rain. You really don't want to go in the rain and get your bags. Just go in and ask the hotel for assistance. But she couldn't do that. You know why? Because she was, she forgot what privileges she had as a young woman. She forgot what privileges she had as a, um, you know, lower level celebrity because apparently her fan, her fans were there. A fan was there to take a picture of her, of Cleotrapa, but she forgot about all of that and she got caught up in comparing herself to another woman. Why do they do this to us? Why are they always comparing themselves to us? I'm so tired of it. It's like you want what I have just because I have it. She wants what Ice Spice has just because she has it. That's not, that's not fair. And I don't know, maybe she believes that friends are supposed to enjoy all the same things and share everything. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that friends are supposed to share everything. In fact, I believe that can spoil the friendship. That can take away the individuality. And then she takes it a step further because Ice Spice tells her, hey, well, after she finally brings it up, Ice Spice tells her, you know, they're going to want to be paid more. So you might have to pay them again. So she gave her an opportunity to pay the man. Does Cleotrapa pay the man? No. Instead, she's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, how much? How much do I have to pay? Really? You're so stingy and you're so selfish and you're so ill-mannered that you don't even know how much to tip the man or you don't even have the, the confidence to go to the security guard and say, hey, apologize for earlier. Take this. Will you please get my back? And at least try. Or like I said earlier, go to the hotel and ask for assistance. They have hoppers. But instead, you want to walk into the hotel after the security guard has gotten all of Ice Spice's things out. 
and they're inside and you want to go confront Ice Spice and tell her what to do with her security guard. And this is where, this is where they start to see us as evil. Like she said, she called Ice Spice evil and demonic because here's what Ice Spice did in response to Cleotrapa trying to force her to tell her security guard to get, get her bags. Ice Spice, she practiced self-compassion. She practiced self-compassion and she thought about herself and she said, why would I wait for my security guard to get your bags when it's his job? You know, and that's what she said verbatim. She said, why would I wait for my security guard to get your bags? And she's absolutely right. And she was being a friend in that moment because I don't, I don't care what you say. If there's a friend who doesn't know how to check you, doesn't know how to uh, make sure that you're being mindful of the situation and mindful of their boundaries, that's not a friend. That is a codependent relationship or that's someone who's trying to really manipulate you. But she came as a friend. She stood in her authentic, uh, authenticity and her authentic boundaries and her authentic self-compassion. And she said to Cleopatra, you're not being mindful, babe. You, you're out of line. And she was out of line. But that's what it is. When we exercise self-compassion and we prioritize our self-compassion, we're seen as being arrogant or even worse, colorist. It's like they're equating, they're equating having self-compassion to being privileged or acting, acting sadity, acting uppity, you know? I did a video about this too, about how the community doesn't allow light-skinned Black women to exercise self-compassion. Maybe that is our light skin privilege. Maybe our light skin privilege is that, I don't know, somehow, somehow because of our skin tone, it sounds absolutely silly and stupid, but maybe they really do think that our light skin privilege is connected to our ability to exercise self-compassion. But babe, you could have exercised that same self-compassion. Cleopatra could have held self-compassion for herself and she could have found a way to take care of herself That's, she could have done that. She could have gone within instead of looking for people to meet her needs. And in this case, her need was to grab a bag. Oh my God, something as simple as that. You're not woman enough to find someone who can help you get your bag or you're not willing to get it on your own. I have never had to carry a bag in the rain and it's not because I'm light-skinned. It's because I tip, I pay, I pay, I pay for that service. And I don't believe Cleopatra offered that man any money or went to the hotel to uh, and tipped anyone uh, anyone else because she didn't say that she did. And when given the opportunity, she questioned it. She questioned, oh, how much? Oh, why can't he get it? Moving on, moving on to the next incident. The hotel, or I actually skipped one. It was the, the promotional flyer. Yeah, so apparently there was a flyer made to show that Cleopatra would be traveling on this tour. She would be uh, featuring, or she would be a, a guest or something. And because the flyer didn't get didn't get a lot of engagement, it got low engagement on social media. Cleopatra felt victimized. She felt like um, it was Ice Spice's responsibility to get it off the ground to make sure that it got high engagement. And she never confronted, she never confronted Ice Spice about this. Like the minute it happened, she didn't come to Ice Spice and say, hey, I noticed that the flyer that your team made for me, thank you so much, by the way, it didn't get a lot of engagement, but I see that you have a lot of engagement on your post. Your team must be really good. Can you teach me some tricks and maybe I can, uh, you know, your team and my team can connect virtually or something and, or you know, try to use that situation as an opportunity to learn and an opportunity to grow because you're a lower level celebrity than Ice Spice, right? So why would you expect for your stuff to pop off just as much as hers? Oh, chalk it up to colorism. I guess it was because she was dark skinned. Maybe her, her I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't understand this craziness why everything has to come back to skin tone. You didn't. You don't even call it out. You don't even address it straightforward and and ask for help for getting your flyer promoted. Maybe you felt like you didn't have, you shouldn't have had to ask. That's the real entitlement. You feel entitled to someone putting in the work for you, the putting in the grind that you say that I Spice skipped. Part of that grind is acquiring a team, is learning how to promote yourself, is figuring out ways to go viral. Because that's why I Spice, uh, part of why she is so successful, because she went viral. And I don't know much about Cleotrapa, but For you to complain about that is just absurd. You know how it is. You don't know how to get it out the mud. You don't know how to grind. So how are you going to condemn someone and say they, they didn't have to grind? And you're not even trying to do that yourself. And you're just saying, oh, well, you know, it's because I'm dark skin. Baby girl, you didn't even try to promote your own flyer or ask for tips or connect with iSpice's team to say, hey, you guys, I'm going to throw some money at you. Here's some money. Get this stuff off the ground. I just don't understand the woe is me codependent. I'm a helpless little baby mindset. And then to go after ice bikes and be like, oh, she, she treated me wrong. She didn't do anything. She did nothing. And if you think that's problematic, that she did nothing and you think that she should have done more, that's because you've been conditioned to think that way, but the world doesn't work that way. Prepare yourself because you're going to have a lot of hard lessons in life and people are going to show you that they care about themselves first and there's nothing wrong with that. Are they willing to help? Yes, but you have to close mouths, don't get fed and rude people are ignored. So after the whole bag incident issue, I guess I Spice and her team kind of saw her as like a, a beggar or whatever, you know? So this is happening before they even managed to get into their respective hotel rooms. So already she has kind of disturbed and irritated everybody. So remember when I Spice was like, oh yeah, you can stay with me. You can be with me. How do you think I Spice feels at this point? Do you, do you really feel like she wants to share a room with this girl? I, I don't, and I don't blame her for it either. I don't blame her for it either. But she has to get her own hotel room. I don't think, based on what Cleotrapa says in her rant, it is clear that she never got her own room for whatever reason. And we know she had some type of money because... Later on, she claims that $700 was stolen from her credit card. So either that's a complete lie or she did have the money and she was just so entitled and so stingy that she wanted to force, she wanted to force other people to pay for her uh, things to accommodate her. And I think that's what, I think that's what it is. I think that she had the money but she was just so fixated on the idea of, you know, getting something from a light-skinned woman and her team, getting something, making I Spice pay her. Remember, at the beginning of this, she claims that when I Spice initially hit her up, she thought that I Spice was just trying to make up for past issues with other dark-skinned women. So already in her mind, she was tokenizing herself. And so she's saying, oh, okay, so you're trying to, um, you're trying to pay your dark skin tax. Okay, well, yeah, you can pay it. Let me, let me benefit from this. Let me go ahead and, ben and benefit from being tokenized. When that's not even what was happening. So now you're so fixated. You're so fixated on the idea of getting your bag from being tokenized that you won't even allow yourself to experience a reality outside of that. And then you end up fumbling the bag. You end up fumbling the bag because you're not going to you're not going to be in that space anymore. You're not going to be around that huge 
team anymore. And I'm not trying to diss Clea Trappa. I'm just saying that this is poor networking. She has poor networking skills. And this is this is symbolic of like burning bridges. This is how you burn a bridge. And then she she hit the she hit the the dropped the nuclear bomb by going to social media with it. And that's what it is. She was completely blindsided by, oh, oh, this light skin, this light skin celebrity is trying to um is trying to tokenize me. Let me, let me get all I can. I'm not gonna spend nothing. I'm not gonna spend anything. She is gonna pay for everything. Mm -hmm. She better, she better pay for everything. That is the energy that I'm getting off of this woman. But you want to say that she's selfish? You want to call her demonic? And then she gets upset when Ice Spice tells her, hey, you know, you have to get your own room. And then... Uh, you know, she's like, hey, you know, you got to get your own room because my boyfriend is here. You know, my boyfriend is here and I'm trying to like get busy with him. And, you know, the girl, Clea Trappett, is acting like she's cool with it. So if you're cool with it and you understand that she's trying to like, you know, get spicy with her bae. Excuse me. Yeah, if you're cool with it and you understand that she's trying to get spicy with her bae. Why are you getting on the same elevator with them? Why did you have to get on the same elevator? And I, and I, 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 you know, when you get in the elevator and you press the buttons, I'm so sure that she was on the same floor as Ice Spice and her boyfriend. I'm so sure. I'm so sure that she pressed the same button that they were going to go to. Like she pressed the same, the button for the same floor that they were headed to, which is why I spice is like, aren't you going to get your own room in front of everybody? Because she is like, I know this girl is not about to walk up into my room with my boyfriend here. While I just told her you're forcing people's hands. So you want to act like somebody's doing something to you by calling your behavior out in front of everyone when you forced her hand. Why else would she have done that? And why would you even allow yourself to have the appearance of trying to tag along? Why wouldn't you book yourself a room? Oh, that's right. She didn't. She did not book a room because she ended up having to be in the hairstylist room. I don't know why she's acting brand new to this. She just told you before you got on the elevator, my boyfriend is here. I'm trying to spend time with him. I'm sorry for my tone, you guys. I'm just like very like, I'm so tired of this because this is, you know how people get online and they're like, oh yeah, I've been through this. I've been through this. Well, we've been through some stuff too. And this is that same old, same old stuff. Like girls acting like they don't know what's up, acting like, we're the mean ones when really they're one, they're not taking care of themselves. They're not establishing their boundaries. So now they want to attack us for having boundaries and they don't want to do anything for themselves. They want us to do everything for them. And then when we don't, it's like, oh, we're bad. Oh, we're colorist. Oh, we think we're uppity or we're, ar we're arrogant. We're being uppity. We're being sedity. And it's like, you think the hairstylist is your friend just because she let you stay in your in, in her room? You really think that she's your friend? And I Spice is, you know, she she's peeping it. And so when Clear Trapper reaches out to I Spice to hang out or whatever, I Spice is like, girl, I don't want to hang out with you. You're hanging out with my hairstylist. You have enough entertainment is basically what she's trying to say. You have enough entertainment. You're with my hairstylist. Nobody's mad at you for trying to network, but... You're out here thinking that you're making friends, making friends, really, really friends, not acquaintances, not making connections and acquaintances, but making friends. Like I said in the beginning, how long do you think it takes Cleotropa to feel like she's someone's friend? I don't think very long. And the hairstylist at that Ice Spice's hairstylist. And this is the part that really got me with the whole food issue. 
So the hairstylist asks Cleotrapa what she wants to eat. And Cleotrapa says what she wants to eat, chicken salad or whatever. The hairstylist is the person who shows Cleotrapa the message from way up there from the team saying Cleo is not in the budget. You don't, do you, do you think that's a coincidence that the hairstylist had to be the one to let her know that? I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a coincidence. You know how when people say that friends don't tell, like a bad, a, a really good friend is someone who doesn't tell you all the bad stuff that they hear about you, right? Like they're not going to, like if someone, like if someone says, oh, you know, I think this person who happens to be your friend is a liar, you're not going to go to them and be like, you know, I was talking to this person and they said they feel like you're a liar. If you don't feel that way, you're not going to tell that to them. If you're not, And if you're not feeding into drama, you're not going to tell that to him. So she doesn't even see how this hairstylist is feeding into drama. She doesn't even understand how this hairstylist could have just been like, oh, you know what? Let's go. I have an idea. Let's go and get something else. Or like, you want to get this instead? Or try to av avert and uh, avoid if she's really your friend. But of course she wouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense that she would do that because she doesn't know you. She's I Spice's hairstylist, so it doesn't matter to her. She doesn't give a damn of how you feel about the me the message sent down from I Spice's team about you not being in the budget. She just wants you to know, hey, I'm not. I can't get you that. I can't get you the. I can't get you the, the chicken salad or whatever. And you guys want to like try to make it seem like they're bonding over a common experience, and they're not. Now moving on to the tour bus incident. And I, I again, I'm skipping over a lot of things that I will address later, but I just want to get through this really quickly because uh, we still need to psychoanalyze Cleotrapa's thinking, but I want to focus on, focus on, this is the, this is the type of stuff that we experience as light-skinned Black women, okay? They try to turn the community against us. And this is using all different types of rhetoric and tactics, okay? So we talked about the tactic of codependency. That's what it is, expecting someone to do everything for you and basically attacking our ability to have self-compassion. Because if we do any of those things, if we don't accept codependent behavior and if we hold self-compassion for ourselves, I guess that makes us colorists. But moving on, the tour bus incident. So apparently from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., Cleotrapa, Cleotrapa stayed on the tour bus from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I guess she was sleeping for a big chunk of that time. She was sleeping on the bus. And so she's thinking that they're supposed to be headed back home because this is like the last day of the tour. But Ice Spice never showed up. We don't know what was going on, okay? And I don't know how her team operates. I don't know how her team communicates with other people. I don't know who else was on the bus. I have no idea who else was on the bus, okay? But uh, Ice Spice apparently, for some reason, was not available. And I, I, I think it's deeper than her just not wanting to be there. But even if it isn't, She's a celebrity. Celebrities do this type of stuff that has nothing to do with being colorist. And no one kept your ass on that bus either. You could have left at any moment, but oh, wait, that's right. You don't have any money to get back home. So you're, that's why you stay on the tour bus the entire time. And it's so funny because There's another YouTube creator, Impressive or whatever. She talks about how a tour bus is like a, a slave ship. <laughs> Who has seen a slave ship? Okay, I'm, I'm probably going to share my screen again because I just need to know. Maybe, maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe I'm ignorant and I don't know anything. Let's see. 
Let's look at pictures of a slave ship and then we'll get pictures of um, a tour bus. Oh my goodness. See, this is this is what I remember. Yeah, I know I'm not crazy. This is what I remember from learning about slavery at my all black school when I was younger. This is this is what it looked like. At the bottom of the ships. And you know how you can get on a ship nowadays and you'll probably be in something similar to this. I mean, way more updated. But like, you know how they have bunks at the bottom of ships or boats? That's fine. But slavery was something way more intense than that. Look at this. Those are people, you guys. These are these are people you're looking at. Packed in there like they're not human. So for her to say that a tour bus is like a slave ship deeply angered me. That's why I say like, you guys are first generation black Americans saying this stupid stuff. But I don't know, wait, let me, let me, let me hold my tongue because maybe I'm the ignorant one. Maybe I'm, because I don't mind admitting if I'm wrong, okay? So let's look at what a tour bus looks like inside. Hmm. Does this look like a slave ship to you? Does that look like a slave ship to you? You just want to disrespect my history and my heritage by saying that it looks like a slave, like it looks like a, a slave ship. How dare you? How dare you? We already have governors in this country trying to rewrite the history of the transatlantic slave trade. And you want to compare, you want to say that a tour bus is like a slave ship? Tour bus rooms and beds. This is a slave ship, hmm? This is a slave ship. Are you serious? This is a this is a slave ship. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy that she said that. And I I'm gonna show you guys that she said that. Wait, wait, because I'm not I'm not tripping. I'm not lying. I'm not lying at all. Let me. <laughs> Let me pull this up. Wait. I'm not going to play the video. I'm just going to pull up. I'm going to pull up the transcript, okay? <laughs> like, this is getting disrespectful. This is getting so disrespectful. Oh, my God. And you have a million subscribers. Baby girl, you have a million subscribers, and you're talking about tour, tour buses are like slave ships. How dare you? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, wait. Okay, here's the video. I'm not going to I'm not going to play the video cuz I I just I like working smarter, not harder, and I don't even remember where it was. What I am going to do is copy the link to the video and I'm going to pull the transcript. Transcript YouTube videos. And if you want to hear her say it, the timestamp will be in the uh, in the transcript. OK. OK. So she says, so for you guys that don't know how tour bus looks, it looks like a slave ship right here, right here. So for you guys that don't know how tour bus looks, it looks like a slave ship. Three bunks stacked up on top of each other very tightly on each side. Oh my fucking God. Slave ship? Tour bus.
Okay. Let's, let's get the ones that have the bumps that she's talking about. Okay. She's talking about these. Okay. Let me, let me make it big. Tour bus. This is a tour bus. Okay. And this is a slave ship. Let's see, let's find one that doesn't have figurines. And I, I'm, I don't know how much longer I'm going to harp on this. I'm just so appalled. Just give, bear with me, you guys. Okay. Bear with me. Slave ship, tour bus. They do not look anything alike. Do you see all these tactics and these lies and this manipulation that they do to turn the community against light-skinned Black women, against light-skinned mixed women? Because it doesn't matter if she's Black or if she's mixed, whatever you think she is. You're trying to turn her community against her trying to say that she made Cleotrapa suffer on a tour bus from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., just like the slaves were on, on slave ships for hours and hours. When they were on there for longer than hours and hours, they were there for months, babe. They were there for months, not just from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. I hope, I hope, I hope this is a... Uh, I hope this is showing on the screen because if not, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> I keep getting a notification that says, please move this window away from the sharing application. I don't know what that means. But yeah, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Um, just to take a reset. <laughs> when I come back, we're probably going to talk about uh, psychoanalyzing Cleotrapa's mindset as well as uh, understanding um, the intersectionality of I Spice in particular and the type of colorism that she's experiencing or the, the color discrimination. I, on this channel, I like to use the term color discrimination just because there are so many trolls online that act like colorism is not a definition that was created by Alice Walker in 1982 in her book, In Our Mother's Gardens. So because of that, I like to use the uh, United States government phrase color discrimination uh but yeah we'll talk about the intersectionality of that as well as psychoanalyzing Cleotrapa's behavior um because if you thought this was psychoanalysis this was not um it goes so deep it goes so deep and I'm so tired of it I'm tired of of the oppression that we face in our community you have people hoping that she fails you have light-skinned Black women who have been denied over time, uh, denied promotions over this type of stuff because, because we held uh, our upheld our standards, because we stood up for ourselves, because we said, why should I have to do this for you? Because we're seen as arrogant. And I'm tired of the oppression. And it is oppression. If anyone ever tries to make you feel like you don't experience discrimination because of the color of your skin, when you damn well know that you do, they are trying to take away your rights. They're trying to take away your rights because it's it's part of the civil rights. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please excuse the frustrated tone. I'm so sure I'll be a lot cooler in the next video. But thank you so much, ladies, and have an amazing day.